Barry Wedge or Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers, Village Road Shows, Ocean's 8 is off to a good start at the box office, earning $15.4 million on Friday from 4,145 screens, as industry estimates put the film's opening weekend total at $41 million. That would be a higher opening than any of the films in Steven Soderbergh's Oceans trilogy, including the current franchise record of $39.1 million for Oceans 12. While those films would still have higher openings if inflation is taken into account, Oceans 11, which opened in 2001, would have a $61 million launch in today's money. It's a sign that Oceans 8 is on its way to the same long-lasting box office success as its male cast counterparts. The Oceans trilogy was known for posting modest openings that went on to more than quadruple their launch totals in their domestic runs. Also read, The Evolution of Sandra Bullock, from Speed to Oceans 8 photos. Similarly, Oceans 8 will hope to bring in female audiences throughout June, when its main competition in the coming weeks, The Incredibles 2 and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, will be catering to different demographics. Ocean's 8 has performed solidly with critics and audiences, earning a 69% score on Rotten Tomatoes and AB on Cinema Score, as did Ocean's 11 and Ocean's 13 upon their respective releases. Sitting in second is The Struggling, Solo, A Star Wars Story, with $14.3 million in its third weekend, followed by Deadpool 2, with an estimated $13.4 million in its fourth weekend, and fourth. A 20 Foz horror film, Hereditary, which could set an opening weekend record for the indie studio if it can hold on to its estimated $11 minus 12 million start from 2,964 screens. Previous record for A24, which usually deals in limited releases, is the 2016 horror film, The Witch with $8.8 .8 million. Also read, just watched, Hereditary, star Alex Wolf has a support message for you, exclusive video, but like, The Witch, and A24's previous summer horror release, it comes at night, there's a gulf between critical and opening night audience reception for, Hereditary. While critics have lauded the horror film with a 94% raw on Tomatoes score, audiences panned it with AD on Cinema Score. A24 horror films have become known for pushing audiences beyond their comfort zone, as The Witch earned AC on opening night, while It Comes at Night earned an F. Avengers Infinity War, which is expected to cross $2 billion worldwide this weekend, completes the top five with an estimated $6.7 million, pushing its domestic total past $650 million. Outside the top five is Global Roads, Hotel Artemis, which is expected to fall short of tracker projections and flop with just $3.2 million from 2,407 screens. Pre-weekend projections had the film making $6 minus $8 million. Despite a stacked cast including Jodie Foster, Jeff Goldblum and Dave Bautista, the film has received mediocre reviews with a 59% RT score and AC from Cinema Score polls. Between Ocean's 8, Overboard, a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, called The Hustle, and a follow-up to What Women Want, called What Men Want, the surge of gender-swapped reboots in recent years is real. It's a smart way of dusting off proven properties with a fresh point of view. And thankfully, there's been an equal push to not just remake old movies with women but provide the right amount of diversity on screen in original properties as well. There's still a long way to go though, and we pulled the women of Theer up to see what favorite films they'd like to see get gender swapped next. Barry Wetch or Warner Brothers. Back to the Future, Back to the Future might be one of those movies that's too sacred to ever think of remaking. But it's also too popular to think it might not be inevitable. So if it were to happen, a female lead in the Marty McFly role might be the only way to go. 
The original is a teaching moment for Marty to overcome his flaws as he helps his father come out of his shell, and having a daughter bonding with a young version of her dad on how to get the girl of his dreams could make for an interesting character twist. Universal, The Hangover, you could make the case that there have already been plenty of remakes of The Hangover, a movie that's not even 10 years old yet, including everything from Bridesmaids to Rough Night to the new Netflix movie Ibiza, but none have been a specific remake of The Hangover, which had a perfect narrative simplicity and a then-under-the-radar cast with surprising chemistry. We could see Riley Keough anchoring a trio that includes Darcy Carden and A.D. Bryant, three actresses who have made a name for themselves but could be massive stars with the right pairing. Warner Brothers Reservoir Dogs, Quentin Tarantino has found some explosive parts for women in his films, and we are glad he made Kill Bill and Jackie Brown, rather than just a gender-swapped Reservoir Dogs, so while something like this would never happen, it'd be fun to fancast how he might approach it with an all-female cast. Uma Thurman's a lock. Jennifer Jason Lee was great in The Hateful Eight, Diane Kruger and Melanie Laurent were formidable in Unglorious Bastards, and Margot Robbie could be a real wild card in his upcoming Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, imagine them all in the same film. Miramax, 12 Angry Men, a jury full of women for a 12 Angry Women, doesn't seem totally realistic today, let alone if the remake were to be set in the 1950s. And Reginald Rose's teleplay is inherently about how men specifically react and change under pressure. But what if the reboot were called 11 Angry Men, and Henry Fonda's role as the one lone dissenter was a woman? Suddenly the story takes on a perspective of being a woman in a room full of men trying to find her voice. United Artists, Glen Gary Glen Ross, another theatrical showpiece in the vein of 12 Angry Men. We'd love to watch an office full of sharp-tongued saleswomen deliver some of David Mamet's most iconic dialogue in Glen Gary Glen Ross reboot. Stick Helen Mirren and Jane Lynch opposite some young firebrands and watch out, New Line Cinema, Home Alone, Home Alone, came out in 1990, 28 years ago. So, while it's gotten a few forgettable, slapdash sequels since then, a proper reboot seems in the cards. Even Zane Wallace might have been a shoe in a few years back. Now someone like The Florida Project's Brooklyn Prince might have the mischievous charm necessary to match up with Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister. Pair her with Melissa McCarthy and Kirsten Wiig as your burglars and you've got yourselves a hit, 20th Century Fox, The Sting, if Ocean's 8 does well, The Sting would be the next ideal crime caper to remake. The best picture-winning period drama has class and creativity that could be ideal for two female grifters. The key is just finding a duo that has the movie star mystique and chemistry of Robert Redford and Paul Newman. We could see an American Hustle reunion in the cards for Amy Adams and Jennifer Lawrence. Universal Twins, Gwendolyn Christie is 6 foot 3, even an inch taller than Arnold Schwarzenegger, who played a perfect specimen in Twins, opposite Danny DeVito. While a dopey Twins remake would almost certainly be beneath what they're capable of, she and Elizabeth Moss proved they have some offbeat, mismatched chemistry and Jane Campion's Top of the Lake, China Girl, as well as sense of humor, Universal Pictures between Ocean's 8, Overboard, a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, called The Hustle, and a follow-up to What Women Want, called What Men Want, the surge of gender-swapped reboots in recent years is real. It's a smart way of dusting off proven properties with a fresh point of view. And thankfully, there's been an equal push to not just remake old movies with women but provide the right amount of diversity on screen in original properties as well. There's still a long way to go though, and we pulled the women of Theorep to see what favorite films they'd like to see get gender swapped next.